America is home to 33 million small businesses, the beating heart of communities across the country. And proof that the American dream is still alive. This is a show about those dreamers and doers and the communities they serve. Their real life stories. Their struggles and successes. Their grit, determination, and passion. And the people who fight to keep their American dream alive. I'm Alfredo Ortiz. I'm Elaine Parker. And it's time for another episode of Main Street Matters. America's small business megaphone. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Main Street Matters. I'm Elaine Parker, the president of the Job Creators Network Foundation. And I'm Alfredo Ortiz, CEO of Job Creators Network. Please subscribe to the show at SalemPodcastNetwork.com or wherever you get your podcasts from. Today, we're joined by Congressman Ralph Norman. Representative Norman has served in the U.S. as a U.S. representative for South Carolina's 5th Congressional District since 2017. He's a lifelong resident of South Carolina's 5th District. After graduating from Rock Hill High School in 1971, he attended Presbyterian College and graduated in 1975 with a Bachelor of Science degree in business. After college, he joined his father's construction business and helped grow it into one of South Carolina's most successful commercial real estate developers. Well, Alfredo, I wonder how his industry is doing um, with uh, the rapid increase in interest rates over the last uh, year or so from the Fed. Yeah, it's got to be getting pretty tight there. Um, things are definitely slowing down. I mean, at least, you know, on, on my end here in Georgia, uh, that's what I'm hearing, that things are really slowing down. You know, the Fed's been so aggressive in trying to combat inflation, um, but yet the Biden administration doesn't want to cut any spending. And of course, we saw it come to, you know, the uh, the the edge on uh, over the weekend with almost a government shutdown. It, it's almost like they love the drama going right to the end and kind of playing chicken with who's going to bend and who's not going to bend. And it's, it's just such theatrics. And I think American people really want to see um, the hard work get done. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, um, I know that when uh, we took over the house and McCarthy became speaker, I mean, they were talking about no more ominous bills. Uh, I call them ominous bills, by the way, they're omnibus bills, but I call them om ominous bills. Ominous. Um, because uh, I think that's actually funnier. Um, but, uh, you know, they they said that they would have 12 different separate appropriation bills. You know, they would vote on each one and be able to have conversation. So, you know, unfortunately, they only got four out of 12 done uh, before the clock ran out. And so now hopefully they have 44 days to take on eight bills and hopefully have the process work through. But now, of course, we have Matt Gates, uh, good old Matt Gates, that's put in a uh, motion to vacate. Uh, we all get what it's like to, you know, to balance budgets. And it just doesn't seem as though uh, our government does. I mean, I think we just passed $33 trillion um, in terms of our debt, uh, which is just unbelievable. And so, you know, I keep saying that the only thing that we can do now is to really have a constitutional balanced budget amendment in this country, because I don't think either side really uh, can take on the, um, you know, the hard choices that are going to be made uh, have to be made to actually balance this budget. Yeah, um, the the twenty in, the twenty twenty three federal deficit is projected to be one point seven trillion dollars, uh, more than even during the Great Recession, and a ridiculous number for the economy that's you know running at full capacity. I, I know the, that no. President Biden talks about how he cut you know over a trillion dollars off the deficit, but he he didn't cut anything. He essentially, essentially the pandemic era spending ended. And so that, so that brought it down, but not because of anything he did. And he continues running up the bill um, and inflation continues running rampant on us. And he also just recently blocked off drilling for hundreds of millions of barrels of oil in Alaska. So in addition, he continues doing things that's going to raise the cost of oil for Americans, cost of gas, which increases the cost of everything since we're so reliant on it. I mean, it's just it's just crazy. I mean, I, I honestly, I can't believe that he's going around, you know, still talking about, you know, Bidenomics. I mean, I'm like, thank goodness. I mean, because, you know, everyone's going to look back at, you know, in 24 when they're in the voting booth and go, wow, man, things are not good for us. And so 
Um, the nice thing is, is that he's taking credit for the disaster that he's created. So, uh, and he's putting his name on it. Um, so I keep saying, which one's going to be the, uh, the greatest failure, branded failure? Is it New Coke? Is it Bud Light? Or is it uh, Bidenomics? I'm not quite sure. We'll see. <laughs> well, it was interesting to watch um, what was happening over the weekend um, with the near shutdown. Um, you know, we saw uh, Congressman uh, Bowman, a Democrat, go and pull a fire alarm um, and this stunt, which I'm definitely going to ask uh, uh, Congressman Norman about. Um, but it, there was more that they did that wasn't reported on. They they actually were rooting for a shutdown. Um they didn't come when they finally came in to vote. They came in one at a time, the Democrats, one at a time, very slowly. They didn't vote electronically. They used the manual cards. They did everything they could to slow things down. Now, the Republicans in fighting is, is also a problem too and slowed things down tremendously. But the Democrats added to it, they were rooting for the shutdown. And him pulling that, uh, Bowman pulling that fire alarm and then claiming he was trying to get out. I mean, they're not locked in there. Yeah, that's ridiculous. I mean, he, he was, de they were definitely running the clock out. Um, you know, fortunately, we were able to get our act together just in time. Um, I'm surprised that Biden was, you know, they were able to wake him up uh, to sign it, actually. So, because uh, I think he usually goes to sleep by about 730 after his milk and cookies. At least, at least. Well, now it's time for our interview with Congressman Ralph Norman. Over the course of his career, Ralph has served with a number of organizations dedicated to improving the community, including the York County Home Builders Association, the Children's Attention Home, the Salvation Army, and the Medical University of South Carolina Board of Visitors. He consistently demonstrated his dedication to conservative principles, Throughout his political career in the South Carolina House of Representatives and the U.S. House of Representatives, he has consistently voted in favor of limited government, individual liberties, and sound financial policies. Congressman Norman, welcome to Main Street Matters, America's small business megaphone. Always a pleasure, Lane. Thank you for having me. Well, I know you've got a lot going on uh, in Congress recently, especially this last weekend. Um, was kind of a nail biter for everybody. Um, Tell, tell us about the shutdown this weekend, and I have to ask you about the alarm stunt. I just can't let it go. <laughs> the fire alarm stunt by a principal. You know, the sad part about that, Elaine, in my office, and I was in Cannon, which is where Representative Bowman pulled the fire alarm, and he's a, from what I understand, a former principal. Uh, when, when he pulled that fire alarm, I had an autistic child in my office, I had four people over the age of 70 to see them go down a stairway that if you miss one step, you would take a 20 foot fall. Uh, you couldn't stop it. They were pretty steep. It's in inexcusable. And I'm, we're sponsoring a bill to have him, you know, discipline. And if he doesn't get consequences, then there is no meaning to have laws on the books. Uh, in, in Washington, D.C., it's a misdemeanor, but it's a thousand dollar, could be up to a thousand dollar fine and six months in jail. And, you know, he, he ought to be held accountable, but I think he will. The Capitol Police are investigating it, but there's absolutely no excuse for, for an adult doing that. Maybe a 14 year old, not an adult. Yeah, that's right. It's completely inex inexcusable. So, well, we averted a government shutdown, uh, thanks to some votes uh, from the Democrats as well. But uh, I think, quite frankly, that's what the people wanted. I think they want us to know that we can actually manage our affairs in D.C. And so we have 44 days till this comes up again. I know you have four appropriation bills that have already uh, passed, uh, eight to go. Uh, that's a lot of work in 44 days. It is, but we can get it done. This should have been done back in June or July. Uh, there's nothing sacrosanct about taking the month of August off. Uh, and the speaker, to be honest with you, should have had us in session. Uh, look, the, the cancer in America today is spending $32 trillion. The interest alone is $20,000 a second. In the next few years, the interest wow. alone, not talking about the principal, the interest will exceed the 
entire $836 billion for our military. We have got to get control of this. And, you know, I'm tired of kicking it down the road. I'm tired, I'm tired of saying, well, the Senate won't pass it. The House is in charge of the purse strings. We, we have to live up to uh, the reason many of us ran is not to bankrupt America. And that's where we're headed if we don't do anything with it. Yeah, ab absolutely. I just saw the latest number, 33 trillion, I believe we just passed yesterday, um, which is just absolutely uh, crazy. You know, we've been saying at Job Creators Network that the only way I think we can actually get our fiscal house in order is to have a constitutional balanced budget amendment. What do you say to that? Oh, I would be all for it. Now, I will tell you the likelihood of passing that is slim to none. Uh, I wish the public could have seen the amendments we had on the floor last week. Uh, we passed when, and I was one of the five that voted against McCarthy in January. One of the things we were were sticklers on is having 72 hours to, to review uh, the, the bills, to have single subject amendments, to have single subject appropriations that were done in a timely manner. And that hasn't happened. But uh, when the amendments last week uh, to... It's called the Holman Amendment, Amendment, where you cut salaries of those people who we feel like are doing the nation an injustice. We probably had 15 to 20. A hundred of our own members voted against cutting the salaries of the very bureaucrats that are tearing this country apart. And it's not small salaries. I think the average salary, and I think we had about 15 amendments were ranged between 162 and 210. That's the kind of money you're talking about. The ones we voted on totaled over $6 million, wow. and we had our own party vote against it. And so uh, we've either got to have a change of heart with our members. The Democrats are not, will never support any type of spending. They will spend, spend money as long as they have a check and as long as they have a card to, to do it. They don't care. They think it's a figment of our imagination. The $33 trillion is real. The, every time the interest rate ticks up, the Fed rate ticks up, it's real on what it's mm -hmm. cost Americans. And uh, I've heard the figure that it cost each individual in this country legally, le legal individuals. I'm not counting the 15 million illegals we'll have, but is over, it's right at $100,000. That's insane. It's got to be stopped. That is unbelievable. Maybe it's time for, uh, what do they call it? Convention, Convention of, of States. states absolutely. Me. Convention of States. Yeah, and I had the term limits bill. I've been I've sponsored a term limits bill uh, for three terms in the House, two terms in the Senate. It got voted down uh, a lot by Republicans in the Judiciary Committee. And if, if there's one issue that Americans agree on is that those elected to Congress shouldn't stay forever. There ought to be some type limit. Here, here. Airline pilots who fly commercial flights have a, have a 65 age limit. And the Senate is a nursing home, and many in the House are way above, you know, past their prime. So we'll live to fight another day, though, on that. Yeah, absolutely. Congressman, I can't, I, I'm glad to hear you say that. Uh, I remember uh, being in the Senate uh, chambers in the gallery uh, when the Tax and Jobs Act was uh, being voted on. And I have to tell you, several of our members literally walking across with oxygen masks. Um, it's just not right. Um, I think I think uh, I love the idea of term limits, but enough for the macro, Elaine. I know we're here to talk about small business, so how important it is to our country, and that's what we do: small business. <laughs> Congressman, as you know, we focus on small businesses here in America, and we've been defending um, our small businesses against what we call um, the Biden's war on small business, essentially since he came into office. And and our poll shows that inflation is is killing our small business. It's the top issue for them. And um, recently, uh, 60 Minutes had a story that uh, the Ukraine, some of the Ukraine funding is actually going to help small businesses in Ukraine. Now, we don't have a position on Ukraine funding either way, whether it's right or wrong or whether we should be doing it or shouldn't doing. But I mean, when you're sitting on a plane and you go through those safety um, protocol with the flight attendants, the first thing they say is you have to put your oxygen mask on first before you help your neighbor. Why isn't the Biden administration helping our small businesses here first 
before they're using taxpayer dollars to help small businesses in another country. They've sold out. This administration, pure and simply, sold out. Why do you think they opened the borders uh, to the invasion we have? We've never had that in the history of this country. I mean, I've been to the border. You know what they're giving them when they when they come in here? Giving them driver's license and social security numbers. That's against the Constitution. He ought to be thrown out of office for that alone. Um, he is tearing up small businesses through regulations. Look what he's doing with the SEC, with every agency of government. This okay. um, The 500-page reports, he's requiring banks, banks to fill out on their carbon emissions. Yet he's allowing China, he's, he cut off our energy supply and is allowing China to build a coal plant every every month. It's insanity. And the only answer is to get this administration out of office. And I would say this, that for every whoever's listening to this broadcast, you better get active. You better fight in your local community to uh, ask about regulations when they go to the planning com- departments. I'm in the construction field. Mm-hmm. So goes housing. So goes the economy. Right. When I got a call last week from a local builder who could not get meter bases, he could not get meter bases to power his house. This is in South Carolina. We've got a severe problem going on. But now laying on the couch and just complaining about it's not any good. I mean, that's why I'm in. I'm doing what I'm doing. Uh, we got to fight, and if we don't, we lose our country. And f- from the business standpoint, that's the backbone of America: small business. That's Main Street USA. And all I would ask, implore people, uh, g- g- use your voice to. Uh, ask about those regulations, call your local House and Senate members, get active and get your voice back. Because I will tell you, particularly after being in Washington, D.C., the left is organized, they're socialist, and they know no ends. They will use power to uh, to affect what we're seeing right now, which I'll be honest with you, it's going to be tough to overcome. We can do it, but it's going to take a fight. Yeah, it's really scary when the uh, their philosophy is that the uh, ends justify the means, um, and and they will basically do everything, have a lawless administration. Uh, as you know, we actually are uh, one of the uh, one of the groups, along with the attorney generals, that sued the uh, Department of Education and the Biden administration on this college loan uh, program. Uh, fortunately, we prevailed on that. But now they're basically working around uh, the Supreme Court in a lawless fashion and potentially uh, covering $425 billion, even worse than the first program, uh, even though Congress has voted on this and said no, and even though the Supreme Court has said no. Well, it's going to take, uh, it's going to take the public to contact their um, AG's office, and we've got to file lawsuits. I mean, that's what they're doing. They're filing lawsuits yeah. and bottlenecking everything. Uh, look at the, the, the states that have shut down that have made copper, lithium, uranium. Uh, th- this, this administration is more and more shutting down America. And depending on China, which is beginning to see, you beginning to see the links to why he's doing that. But it's a, um, it's disturbing. And I will tell you that. I've never seen as many California license plates in South Carolina, New York license plates in South Carolina. And they're coming coming there because we got a good gov- good government in South Carolina, but you got to fight to keep it. And a lot of the buses that of the migrants are going to states just like South Carolina to dilute them, to dilute the vote. We're a red state. No. But it's it's a uh, it's a challenge, but we can meet it. But it's not going to be from being quiet, and it's not going to be from from uh, if, if we lay on the couch and just complain, then we'll get the result. Well, I know South Carolina is a right to work state, and uh, you have a couple auto manufacturers there. What do you think of the UAW strike? Well, it didn't surprise me. Biden was in line, asking for thirty six percent pay hikes, uh, four day work weeks. I wish we had a Reagan in office who would make the right call as he did with the airline uh, strikes uh, that occurred back in his day. I don't know if the same, if it would be a similar outcome, but 
Uh, the car business is going through a crisis in and of itself. The subsidies for electric cars, which Americans do not want, right. and which is dependent on China for the batteries. Right. Um, you know, that's just a symptom. It's just going to, with with the supply chain shortage and with the strike, you're going to have more more dealers going out of business. And is that what we really want? You know, we, we need an administration that encourages business, has incentives, cuts tax rates. But this administration is diametrically opposed to small business, and there's no way they would support anything except higher taxes that they get to spend your money for building walls in Libya uh, and other states, to giving yeah. money away to Green New Deals. It's uh, ESG. It's it's insanity. Yeah, that, that's absolutely crazy. And, you know, it's amazing that Biden's going around the country uh, uh, talking about how great his economic policies have been and how, you know, Bidenomics is uh, really saving our country when in reality it's completely the opposite. I mean, my goodness, the other day I went to uh, go make myself a turkey sandwich. I went to my local grocery store to buy some turkey. It's $15 a pound. You can't even make yourself a turkey sandwich anymore. No, and it's, it's, all, you know, it's, it's all brought on by... Uh, doing the things he's doing. The fact that he shut down the Keystone Pipeline, the fact that we were once an energy independent, and now we're buying it from OPEC countries that hate America. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, the, it's the writing is on the wall. He has sold out. And this, this reign of terror cannot end, it couldn't end quick enough for me. If we don't have a change of administration, then this country is in for a, a socialistic regime which is where we're heading. Well, you know, obviously 2024 is just around the corner and uh, we're in the middle of primaries right now. And, uh, you know, messaging for the GOP is so important to make sure that we we really talk to the American public about who we are, what we are, what we stand for. Sometimes I think we focus too much on what I call the back of the can, the ingredient statements, instead of the back of the can and the vision. Uh, we were actually, uh, we launched a, a project called the Great Opportunity Project, which really we hope is kind of a redefinition of the uh, grand old party to the Great Opportunity Party, because I believe that's what we stand for uh, as as immigrant, uh, you know, as a family of immigrants. I mean, I know that, uh, you know, that's what my parents, uh, you know, appreciated about this country and fell in love with this country. And I think if you ask any immigrant in this country, that's what they actually really focus on and they talk about is the opportunity uh, that is before them in this country. But obviously Biden's ruin, ruining all of that. What do you think we need to do to better articulate that vision? And, and do you even like the, this idea that we're pushing for the Great Opportunity Party? Absolutely. And, you know, every time I see a picture of the border of all the migrants coming across, I don't see any leaving the country. And my question to anybody that right. chooses not to get not to get active, if we lose America, where do we go? Cuba, China, Venezuela, name me a country that you go to. And when I heard that gang member who got caught when I visited the border and this was a random catch, 14-year-old gang member, we said, "Where are you going?" South Carolina. Why South right. Carolina? Boeing. This is they've got money. And so we, but you know, we've got such opportunity uh, to to do the right thing. We've got such an opportunity to to broadcast and shout from our top of our lungs what a great country it is. And the media, for the the mainstream media, is against us. Uh, you've only have a few outlets that really tell the truth. But I heard the other day from a uh, from a high ranking. A uh, conservative who's been around a long time. People are now going to small podcasts. They're going to uh, individuals, Twitter. They're getting their ideas from uh, the not the mainstream media. They cut them off. And so, other than One News Network and Newsmax and others, you don't hear it. But uh, I think it's changing now because I think people see the severity of it. If we don't, we just have to have a voice, and we'll be able to use it. And, you know, that's all, I mean, what else can we do? I mean, right. and plus elect people who will not change when they get up there. I, I'm sick and tired of people, you know, running for office, being a conservative. When they get up there, they change. And um, we, we just got to the only way you deal with them is take them out of office and put those in charge that will do something. 
Congressman, we just have another couple of minutes left with you. How can people find out what you and your staff, more about what you and your staff are doing to help save this economy? Go to repralphnorman.com. That's the best way to, uh, to, to find out what we're doing. And uh, we put out, our Twitter account is, is active. Uh, we are, I'm, I'm getting more and more active on letting people know what we're doing, the, the bills that are coming up that directly in fact impact their lives and directly impact small business. And it's, um, we, we got such an opportunity. I, you know, people say you're you know, so pessimistic to things coming, but it's, it's an opportunity too. The smallest light, you know, has the brightest uh, shine in darkness. And that's what we have to do. It's evil. I will say this too. Uh, it's evil what's what our children are being subjected to in school. It's evil the supply chain shortages because that's intentionally being cut off. And um, how we respond is it will make the difference. And I am positive we'll, we'll respond in the right way. I agree. Well, Congressman, thank you very much for jo- taking the time to join us today on Main Street Matters, America's small business megaphone. And thank you all for taking the time to listen today. Main Street Matters is part of the Salem Podcast Network. New episodes debut every Wednesday and Friday. Please subscribe at SalemPodcastNetwork.com or wherever you get your podcasts from. And we'll be back again soon with another episode.